Hey everyone. Now in the last video, you saw that I got a whole bunch of Ubiquiti stuff and connected it up. And part of that were a couple of cameras, but they were PoE cameras that plugged into the network on ethernet. But I also got this camera here, which is just a, a wireless one. And the only connection it's got is a USB connection. So I'm just gonna put, put that in power, this little power adapter here and power that up. And it is gonna connect to the AP. Now I've never done this yet, other than I had a quick look and saw the interesting way that it found the access point. So what I've got here is some packet captures and I'm gonna packet capture the whole thing, completely setting up the camera from start because it's never been on the Dream Machine as, as yet. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Now if I have a look at that access point here on the interface, you can see I have had two APs on but I've just got the one on here now and I've got no SSID set up on it. So you can see it's empty here. But what I've got is the packet captures. So if I go back to the radios, you can see, I'm gonna ignore six gigahertz. You can see though that it's on channel one and 36. So what I've got here is a capture on channel one and another one on channel 36. So just on channel one, I'll just pause it. You can see I've got my home network, I've got the power wall doing its thing. And it's got this hidden one here. And if you look at that MAC address for the BSSID, you can see it's very similar to over here, there's a hidden one as well. So they're the two coming from this, forget all the rest. So what I've got is a capture going here and you can see the filter I've got at the top. I'm just capturing for the MAC address of those two BSS IDs and also the MAC address of this camera. So when I plug it in, it'll do stuff. So you can see just the broadcast here. And one thing, first thing I noticed actually is the bit rates. Now I set the minimum bit rate of an SSID to 11 for 2.4 gigahertz and I've taken that SSID off, but it's interesting that that's retain that 11 meg for the low bit rate or that's its default i don't know but it's pretty good that it does that the 5 gig one has a default of 6 6 meg i would have preferred that to be 12 but anyway they're default rates and i have no visibility over them because they're not they're not ssids that i set up so as you can see as you saw before they're hidden so I'll just go down here and have a look closer at one of those frames let's have a look here you can see, as I said, the SSID is hidden there. That's why the length is zero, so forget the SSID. But down here somewhere, you can see we've got some vendor-specific stuff from Ubiquity, and it's got, just got some data here. And that, I'll just make that a bit over here so you can see the ASCII part. So that's there. So this capture, I'll just start it again, even though it's done nothing. What I can do now is just filter out the beacons, just for now. So what I'm gonna do is just do all the management frames without the beacons, and then plug the camera in. Okay, so ready to go, AP's there. Just gonna plug the camera in to the power supply and see what happens. Welcome to Unify Protect. Fucking hell, that's loud. All right, so that's doing that, and I'm capturing both of those channels on, on the two bands, so I don't know which one it's gonna do something on, but I should capture it. So over here, I expect to see some sort of probes coming through. Okay, so there's some probe requests, probe responses. And some ready things. to adopt. Okay, and it says ready to adopt. A bit Angelina Jolie-ish, but anyway, that's what that said. Now I'm gonna have a close look at what just happened. I haven't actually done anything on the Ubiquiti console yet, so I'm just gonna go and see what happened here. Now there's no association requests. If you look at association requests, that's what our request is there, there's nothing. So I'll go back to the probe request, probe response. I'll just look at them. And here's what, what you can see. So probe request, if you go into it, I'll just collapse all of these. Let's collapse all of those and get to the one I want, which is the vendor specific one for Ubiquity. And what you can see in the probe request coming from the camera, it had this stuff here. And if we have a look over here, you can see hello pops straight out at you, but it's also got the MAC address of it. So the MAC address is what ends in 773243, 773243. So that's it there starting at F4, F4E2, blah, 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 which will be up here, by the way. F4, you see it in there. So it contains the MAC address. Well, it would anyway, because it's a, a probe request, but it's got it as part of the this information element, which is different to where it is up here. So up here, you'll see it as well, 3243. Three. But down here, it's kind of advertising itself specifically for Ubiquity. So there's a, a couple other bits of data here. I don't know what they mean, but that's part of that information element down here. and. What, one thing I found most interesting about this is it still didn't have the SSID in it. So if you look at probe requests, it's still a broad, where are, where are we? SSID down here, it's still a broadcast one. But of course, the response that comes back, forget the ones that are mine because they responded anyway, this is the one I care about. 
This one here is the probe response and it obviously as always gives up the SSID. So that's the SSID element blah blah blah. But it's interesting that it didn't need to be probed for that specific SSID. It just I would say needed that vendor specific stuff. So when I get to where it was this is easy when it's collapsed and I can just see it blah 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 that one there. This is what came back. Not much, but something that obviously told it what it needed to hear. So I've done that bit. Now I'm going to see what happened on the uh, Ubiquiti console thing. So over here, let me try this cameras. We've got this click to adopt. So it knows what model number it is. So that must have come in in that probe request. So that's obviously how it got that. It must have been. So I'll make sure I'm still capturing here, which I am. So I'll just do again management frames and no beacons. Keep that scrolling. Now I'll do this adopting. Adopting. So what's it doing now? Probe request, probe response. I also want to see association request and response. So I'll just go back to management without beacons. Camera yep. set oh, shit. Ready to stream. Fucking hell. You've probably heard that. It said it's ready to stream. So the stuff that went in there. So everything we need is captured here. We've got the association request response. It happened on 5 gig. You see channel 36. So there it is. Request response. Done, done, done. Some little action frames here. And that's pretty much it. So look at data frames now. Got the four-way handshake that it did. Let me just get that organized there. Four-way handshake, which apparently it did twice. And that's it. It's associated. I guess it's ready now. So that's how it found the network. Now this is interesting. It says the camera's got poor Wi-Fi connection when obviously it's sitting right next to the AP here. So I don't know how it came to that conclusion. Bitrate 5 meg. I'm going to tip that it hasn't actually sent data through yet and the data frames that have been there are the low bitrate uh, management frames. That's just my guess and it's reporting as that. But look at the, look at that. So it's there's plenty of signal there. The TX rate's good. It's fine. So if I go into that, Go down to settings and let's get the streaming thing. Get the link for it. Copy link. And I'll start that up. So it's kind of like the link, but without the enable thing on the end. And it's port 7447. And get rid of the S. And something should come up. I say something should come up. All right, so there it is with a million pictures in the pictures. <laughs> Trees going off out there. So I just put that in to have some sort of data. Now that's coming here through a VPN and funky things, but never mind that. But let's see what it says now. So, okay, the experience has gone back to excellent. You can see it up there now. And as I said, that would most probably be because I'm going to guess that it's accounting for the amount of retries as a percentage, but when there was no data, the odd retry is almost 100%. So that's what I'm going to assume that might be. But that's a guess. Anyway, of course it's fine. Now, even though I'm capturing on that channel 36, I can't actually see much. So here it is here. You can see the data is not really going up very much. And the reason will be is because it'll be doing a higher bit rate than my particular capture card here is deciphering. So it's, it's right next to the AP, so it'll be using the highest that it can, which is different to the capture device I'm doing here. So I'm missing out on the data packets, but you know they're going through. Now I'm not going to stop there, I'm going to put the Hack RF in and just have a quick look at that 5 gig spectrum, just for the hell of it. That's what I do. So you can see it here on channel 36 and also channel 40 because it's bonded for 40 meg channels. Um, there's not much activity going right at the second. If I try to connect, you see the odd spike here, but this doesn't catch it because it's only sweeping at whatever rate it's sweeping. But I've got the max hold here and you can see obviously it's there. It's still pretty light on the RF because there's only one camera, a bit of video. Won't hurt anything. Okay, so I thought I'd show you that because I found it interesting that this associates to the network or finds it via just the probe request information element rather than the SSID itself. So keep in mind these APs always transmit a hidden SSID. I say always, I haven't found a way to turn it off, I haven't really looked, but that would be there so that things like this can just get there and make it easy for a user who doesn't look this deep into it. Now, as, as I showed, I do like to look at the RF as well and I use my Hack RF for that. I'm thinking of using something like Ekahau or Hamina in the future, but um, people ignore RF, but I like to see what's going on.
So anyway, that's layer one and that's layer two. So that'll do for now. Till next time, take it easy.